This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Yardimos. Today we're going to take a look at how to solve trigonometric equations and these particular trigonometric equations are going to contain factoring. Okay, so we're going to go over those. So um, in this video we'll explain how to solve these problems that contain factoring and we'll use as our method reference triangles. Okay, so we will not use the unit circle, we will not use a graphing calculator. Let's get started. This is our first problem. Well, in this problem we are going to start with a cosine function and a tangent function being multiplied together equal to a cosine function. So uh, when we do these problems, what we'd like to do is move everything over on one side. So I need to subtract cosine of x to get rid of it from the right side. We didn't have to do this with our first video because it was very simple. We only had one trig function and uh, this is different. We got a double trig function, more complicated. We're going to get a, a, a zero on one side and you're going to see the benefit of doing that. Uh, we're going to make use of a property here. So on the left side we're going to have the cosine of x tan x and we're going to subtract cosine of x. Alright, so we got all that laid out. Now what we want to do is factor, because you'll notice that there is a cosine of x that's common to both of these terms. So we're going to factor that out. So if I take out cosine, I'm going to be left with tan x. And if I factor out a cosine here, I'm going to get a 1. And this does work, because if I do the distributive property, uh, if I do multiply cosine times tan, cosine tan, cosine times negative 1, I get negative cosine. So it works with the distributive property. Now that the problem has been factored, we're going to set the factor as equal to 0. So I'm going to set this factor equal to 0. I'm going to set the other factor to equal to 0. And we can do this because I'm using the multiplication property of 0. If I'm multiplying two things together in the product of 0, either the first factor is equal to 0 or the second factor is equal to 0. Problem, this is used, this property is used in algebra all the time. Okay, now that we have our two separate equations, we're going to solve for the trig function, which is already done here. We're going to add 1 to both sides over here, and we get 1. Okay, now I should make these into fractions because we're going to be setting up uh, reference triangles for each of these problems. And if you remember, there is a nice convenient little uh, memory device that helps us all seniors take calculus. And remember this tells us where the trig functions are positive. So I'll put positive above here. So it means that all trig functions are positive first quadrant, sine's positive in the second quadrant, tangent's positive in the third quadrant, cosine's positive in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so that'll help us build our reference triangles. All right, so if we look over here in the cosine uh, ratio, now I know that this is not a positive value. Zero over one is a non-negative. It's, it's not, it doesn't have positive, it's not positive or negative, but for the sake of drawing a reference triangle, let's consider it as a positive value. Okay, so I'm going to be making two uh, sets here. So let's say for our first uh, problem, let's say I'm dealing with positive cosine, which would be I'm working in the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant. So I'll build my reference triangle here and build it down here. Okay, and uh, we know the definition of cosine. The definition of cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So that tells us where to put our sides. It says that the adjacent side is 0. And it says that the uh, hypotenuse is 1. Okay, so we've got this problem. And same thing here, hypotenuse is 1. So now this is not a special triangle, but something interesting will happen uh, if you look at this problem. I mean, if you've got to imagine a triangle that has no width, 
if the triangle had no width but the radius is 1, this would have to be actually this would have to be over here. This angle would have to be way up here, or a right angle, and this side would have to be over here if, if there was no width to our triangles. That this one would really be a radius and it would be sitting alongside the y-axis. Kind of a hard concept to get by looking at this. So if you were to throw this in a calculator and do the inverse cosine of 0 over 1, right? So you you put in the inverse cosine of 0 over 1, which I'll write over here. Okay, if we do that, our calculator is going to tell us that it is 90 degrees. Okay, so what does the calculator tell us? The calculator gives us one angle right away. It's basically saying that if we were to look at the reference angle here in the first quadrant, that that angle, if we were to spin this angle, it would be equal to 90 degrees. And as I said, that really means that we're hugging here up against the y-axis. So if the reference angle is indeed 90 degrees, then it's a 90 degree reference angle here as well. Okay, so that would mean if I spawn all the way around this way, and it's a 90 degree reference angle, it's got to be 360, take away 90, it's really a 270 degree angle. And that's going to be our two answers. Okay, so when we solve this problem for cosine, we're getting 90 degrees, and we're getting 270. Okay, those are just the answers from doing cosine. Now let's do the tangent problem. When we do tangent, I'm going to draw another uh, ref set of reference triangles over here for tangent. Uh, where's tangent positive? Well, it looks like tangent's positive in the first and the third quadrant. So I'm going to put the, let's see, the definition of tangent right, is opposite over adjacent. And once again, that tells us where to put our sides. That means the opposite side is 1, the adjacent side is 1. Opposite side is 1, adjacent side is 1, except these would be both negative. And a negative divided by a negative would still be a positive value here. So uh, these triangles are a little bit easier to do because you should recognize them as 45, 45, 90. So the reference angle is 45 degrees. Okay, so when we draw our angles, like here, we draw our angle up here. That'll be easy to do. And if we draw our second angle here into the third quadrant, that should be easy there also. So what do we get here in the first quadrant? We get, well, a 45 degree reference angle. That would be 45 degrees. Okay, and over here in the third quadrant, we do 180 degrees plus a 45 degree reference angle. That's 225. Okay, and there you go. I've got four answers to this problem, and there they are. Okay, let's move on to problem number two. All right, here's our second problem then. And let's start with a very strange looking problem that uh, will remind us of algebra. Okay, so we've got this very complicated problem. Good news is it's all in sign, so we don't have to worry about mixture of different trig functions. But this is a quadratic equation. Yep, it's a quadratic trigonometric equation, but nonetheless it is. So what we're going to have to do is solve this by factoring. So what we will do is imagine how this problem is factored. Now, there's a lot of ways to factor this problem. And, you know, how do, how do I multiply to get 6 sine squared? Is it 2 sine times 3 sine? Or is it sine times 6 sine? Now, which way is it? Well, I played around with this a little bit earlier, and it turns out that it is going to be uh, 2 sine of x times 3 sine of x. And they will multiply to get 6 sine squared. There's only one way to get a positive 1. I have to multiply 1 times 1. And uh, I do have to get some negatives in the problem. So it's got to really be a negative times a negative, right? A negative times a negative 
will give you a positive 1. Now I want to make sure I get this middle negative 5 and I'm going to show you how we can get that. If I multiply these two inners, I'm going to get negative 3 sine x Oops. sine of x. There we go. Okay, then if I multiply the outside here, if I multiply them, I'm going to get a negative 2 sine of x. And those do add up to be negative 5 sine x. Okay, so that's the check. It works. So now we're going to move on with the rest of the problem. All right, so now that we've factored it successfully, we're going to set the two factors equal to 0. So 2 sine of x minus 1. And, or we got 3 sine of x minus 1 equals 0. Again, I'm making use of the multiplication property of 0, multiplying two things together to equal to 0. One of those two things has to be equal to 0. So we really land up bifurcating into two separate equations there. All right, well, let's do some algebra. Let's add 1 to both sides. Let's add 1 to both sides again. Next here, for this problem, we're going to divide by 2. So I divide everything by 2, and I get a half. Here I divide by a 3, so I get sine of x equals 1 third. Okay, so I've got a couple different reference triangles that I'm going to have to make, um, and uh, I'm going to draw two separate sets here. And hopefully I can make them large enough so they're both useful. Yep, I think I could do it. All right, great, that's going to work out well. Okay, so uh, remember we're also going to make use of a handy dandy little uh, expression. If you remember, um, there's this little device uh, over here. I'll put all seniors take calculus. Again, it shows us where everything is positive, where all the trig functions are positive. All trig functions are positive here, sine's positive here, tangent positive is here, and cosine's positive there. All right, here, this problem, we are dealing with a positive sine, so we know that sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2, so we're going to build reference triangles there in quadrants 1 and quadrant 2. Okay, so now we got our triangles drawn. Uh, let's put in our sides where they belong. And since we're dealing with sine, we know that sine, well, the definition of sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that tells us again where to place our sides. So opposite side for this angle is 1, and the hypotenuse is 2. So opposite side is 1, hypotenuse is 2. Okay, you should recognize this. This is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and we know the reference angle that's opposite 1 is 30 degrees. So this has to be a 30 degree reference angle also. Okay, so let's get to our angle. So our first angle will be measured right here, and our second angle will be over here in the second quadrant. So we got to get those two answers. Okay, so what's the first answer? Well, we go 30 degrees up. That is 30 degrees. So our answer over here is going to be 30. And let's see, over here in the second quadrant, let's see, that's going to be 180. Walk it back 30. So that's really 150, right? Because 150 plus 30 is 180. So it's going to be 150 degrees. Okay, great. Now let's move on to the second problem. Now the second problem, we're also dealing with a positive ratio. And it is sine. So again, we're going to use the first two quadrants because that's where sine is positive. So again, I'll end up building reference triangles in the first two quadrants. Okay, this time I'm going to put the opposite side as 1 and the hypotenuse is 3. So the opposite side is 1 and the hypotenuse is 3. Now this one is not a special triangle. There is no special relationship here. So the only way to really find this reference angle is to do the inverse sine. So you really do have to use the calculator here. We're going to have to take the inverse sine of 1 third, and that's going to tell us what this reference angle is. So we're going to have to throw that into a calculator. So after throwing that in a calculator, uh, I found that the answer is 19.5, approximately. I should put approximate symbol here. 
So it's approximately equal to 19.5. So uh, that's going to be our answer, or at least our reference angles. So both reference angles are 19.5s. All right, so let's find the angle. So the trig angles always start in the east, so I'll rotate around. And there's our first answer. So our answer there for x is 19.5. Okay, now we got to find the answer in the second quadrant. So we're going to rotate around to get to the second quadrant. And let's see, that's going to be 180, take away 19.5. Okay, and that answer turns out to be 160.5 for that angle right there. Okay, so um, you could see what was happening there. I want to replace that one. So if people could see what value I'm getting for that uh, answer there. So uh, when people look back at that triangle, they can see where that came from. All right, so what are all the answers here? Well, the answers, if I put them now in order, you'd have 19.5, you'd have 30 degrees, you got 150, and you got 160.5. There you have it. You got all the answers there. Okay, so I wanted to show you how difficult it can get with factoring involved with trigonometric equations. Okay, so make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our other interactive quizzes, instructional videos, and text-based lessons. Take care.